Hey guys, so welcome to my uh, part two of my uh, China Shack install here. Um, so I did get this install completed in this Game Boy a little while ago, and I've been playing with it for a little while. Um, nothing too special. To be honest, the frame dropping doesn't really bother me that much. I mean, it's... I notice it frequently, and it's kind of frustrating, but it's not like... You know, it's 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 not game breaking. It's I'm I'm not gonna put down this Game Boy just because the 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 dropping is is that severe. I mean, granted, I will I am more likely to grab my Freckle Shack instead, but it is what it is. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to point out two things. Uh, first, the backlight does actually turn off completely. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that in my last video, but ta da turns off completely and you know indoors that's not really useful but if you're using it outdoors I mean maybe you can save a little bit of battery life second thing instead of putting the sensor on the IR cover I put it about halfway in the middle here and you can see just touching well it was I don't know I gotta find the spot again but you can see it was off, now it's on. There we go. See? It does work, it does go through the plastic. So you can, you don't have to put it on the IR cover. The IR cover's the thinnest, and that's gonna be the best place for it, but it's not the only place. Um, ideally, I'd actually like to put it under the screen lens or something, so you could just tap, uh, excuse me, sorry. Um, Right in the middle, actually, would be pretty pretty nice. But nonetheless, let's get started. This isn't the Game Boy I wanted to put this in. And I finally got the parts. Or rather, the Game Boy I do want to put it in. So, let's go ahead and get that installed here. Uh, there is also one more thing I want to try. Someone had pointed out in the comments something that I just flat out missed when I was looking at this the first time. There appear to be some solder pads for uh, brightness control. Like for example, if you want to wire it up to some buttons. I personally, I don't. I think the sensor is good enough, but I still think it's worth investigating. Okay. Oop, there goes my flux. Take this crumbled sensor. Oh man. That was unintentional. I'm still pretty sure this is just copper tape. So, not the end of the world, but still not what I meant to do. Okay. So, right up here at the top, there appears to be a pad labeled hold and then a pad labeled plus minus. So, if these are what I think they are, we can... Uh, well, shoot, we can try this out without soldering. Let's give it a shot. I need that case. There we go. Put a game in just to hold the motherboard in place. Put some batteries in. And boot it up. So if this works the way I think it is, oopsie. Okay, I'll just use my multimeter here. Put it in current mode. Oh, I think I need more than two though. Yeah, so I don't know what that... Oh, there it goes. Yeah. 
So the idea is, let me turn off the light so you can see better, that you wire up the hold pad to a button, whatever button you want, and then the sensor's going crazy. You probably desolder that sensor. And then you wire up the other button to whatever button you want to hit to adjust the set the brightness. And then so let's say you put the hold button to select. You hold select and then let's say you put this other button to, I don't know, down on the D-pad. So you hold select and every time you hit down it's going to toggle the brightness as if you were hitting the sensor. And I'm just using the tweezers. I'm using the uh, multimeter to simulate a button press without actually wiring this up to a button. And then the tweezers to simulate a second button press. But yeah. So that's how that works if you want an alternative to using the touch sensor. But I'm just going to use the touch sensor. I think it'll be okay. Okay. That was the main purpose for making this a video. The rest of this is just going to be a typical install, same thing I did last time. I'm going to be ditching this motherboard here with the broken connector. And I'm going to remove this screen. And these here. Put that back together later. But I want to put a screen in there so I'm not getting dust all over it. Okay. So this thing. I don't think I mentioned this in my last video, but one weird thing that this kit does that most other kits so far don't do is they removed the metal frame around the LCD which gives you a little bit of uh, backlight bleeding from the edges here so I'm going to try to use some electrical tape unfortunately all I have is this stupid wide stuff which is almost literally as wide as the screen itself um, but this is just Nitto 2100 FRTV uh, I, I like this stuff it's pretty good um, but I'm just going to cut some tape off here. Oh, apparently it's already cut. That's both annoying and convenient. Okay. Oh, I had my phone out for a reason here. So, I, I'll, I'll post a link to this picture here, but if you want to wire up your buttons, instead of wiring it up to the test pads right there at the bottom, you can use these vias up at the top left for select uh, the D-pad and then over here on the right for start and the A and B and that's those right here versus uh, these right here. I'll, I'll link to this picture down in the description here but I just wanted to show you in case you actually do want to use a button combo instead of the touch sensor. But like I said, I'm going to try and stick with the touch sensor. I think it's pretty cool. That's like the one advantage this kit offers over other kits. Um, give me just a sec, just cutting some uh, tape here. So I just cut my strip in half. No real big, big deal. All I'm doing is trying to cover the edge of the display. I'm not trying to get onto the LCD itself. All I want is to get rid of that light bleed. Fold that over. Okay. And I'll trim this in just a sec here. And 
Now I hate using electrical tape in electronics, despite the name, mostly because it leaves behind this uh, nasty adhesive residue if you let it sit long enough. But in this case, I can't think of a, uh, well, anything really that would work better for this purpose. Because we want a nice clean edge. There we go. And black. Okay. Worried about those little bits sticking up because those will be under the lens. Or should be under the lens, I hope. Okay, I would call that sufficient. I'll drop that in here. Using my uh, Freckle Shack spacers here. Well, these aren't these aren't the ones that came with my Freckle Shack, of course, but these are largely the same thing. I made these. These are 3D printable. I posted a uh, file that you can use on the uh, last video there to print those out. But they're taken for measurements from my actual Freckle Shack. Just to try and take the guesswork out of uh, aligning this. Oh. oh, you know what? Hang on. Stick this in there. That'll make everything easier. That's just the original LCD gasket. It'll help get everything lined up properly. And it'll stay there. Okay. I'm just going to do the same thing with this sensor here. Instead of fussing with it too much, I'm going to stick it down. Some tweezers. And I'm going to use a, uh, this time around, instead of a Revision 3 motherboard, I'm using a Revision 4 motherboard. Only because this one's already cleaned up, and this is what came with the shell. And finally, because I think there's some value, not tangible value, of course, but just, I think it's somewhat interesting that all of my backlit consoles are using V4 motherboards. But also this one doesn't have scratchy audio, so... and a broken... bail. Plus I did just clean the power switch. Off camera, of course, but...
it's all gross. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, and power switch. I'm just going to do four screws. I'll do the other two in a minute. There we go. And you get brightness control and IR. And the benefit of a clear shell is you can actually see where the freaking sensor is. Unlike that red one. I was having trouble finding it. Now all this thing needs is a new lens. And I think we can call it... An evening. And I just got some new ones in the mail here. Of course, you can get a custom one if you want. There we go. I think this thing looks sweet as hell. Of course, still has the uh, frame dropping issue. Not much that can be done about that, but I'm thinking if you have plans to use this kit in a uh, somewhat limited edition console, which I mean this is, this is a midnight blue, this is actual OEM, this isn't a reproduction shell or anything. Um, I don't know, I think it's I think it's still pretty decent, and I think masking the edges of that screen make a huge difference. If you want to, you can mask the top and the bottom too, that way it, it uh, kind of matches a little bit better, but I don't know, it's, unless you're playing Pokemon, it's, it's not that noticeable. I don't even notice it playing this game really. I mean, it's there. If I keep looking for it, I'll find it, but it is what it is. Can make it brighter. But yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this kit. I, I still think it's pretty cool, and now that it's in the Game Boy, I actually plan on putting it in. I'm a lot happier with it. Because that red Game Boy is, uh, not that I have anything against red, it's just this one in particular is especially beat up. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.